Hello everybody and um, I want to share a recipe with you today and it's for the best nacho jalapenos that I have ever tasted. I've been doing this for years. Um, I use them on nachos. Um, I've showed you guys how to make tostadas yourself. You know, nachos that you put cheese on top and then you put jalapenos on it, sliced jalapeno. These are also great on pizza tostadas, bean tostadas, you know, a few of these jalapenos on top. Now, this does not require water bath tanning at all. I've been doing this for years. I got this recipe from a woman who lived in Mexico for many years, and this is how they would put up and preserve their jalapenos. Now, I will tell you, the best way to check them, to see if they're going bad on you, is just by looking at the bottom of the jar. If it gets a milky appearance to it, kind of like olives. Have you ever had a jar of olives and you look at the bottom and it's kind of milky? Well, that's because it's going bad on you. It's the same thing with these jalapenos. But I've never had a jar go bad on me. I just haven't. And I've had them a year and a half. Now, I may end up doing more. I only did two jars. And I'm thinking maybe I'll do a couple of more jars. And uh, this is good, though, because you don't have to water bath can it. You really don't. And that may be a problem in the future with gas and everything and the gas prices. And also, at the end, when you get this all done, shake your jar up to... Pre there's salt you're going to add to this. And shake the jar up to mix that salt in there so it dissolves. Now, I use kosher salt. You could use canning salt if you want. I've never used table salt, but I do use kosher. And what I'm going to start off with is by cutting my jalapenos about a half inch thick or an inch. You want fairly thick slices because if you make them too thin and then you go to boil this with the vinegar, they'll fall apart on you. And you want like whole slices of the jalapeno. And I, by the way, you can can jalapenos whole this, doing the same process, only you don't have to cut them. And you could do any pepper th this way, jalapeno or hot pepper, you know, and you don't have to cut them. You just measure them out and continue with the same process as what I'm doing here because I'm going to measure these into a couple of quart jars. My goal was to do two quart jars. And I was able to do that. This is about a pound and a half of jalapenos. And they're all different sizes. Some are big, some are medium, some are small. But I've got two quart jars of the jalapenos. And what I'm going to do to this is I'm going to add, I'm going to put them into a big pot. Because you do want to cook them for a little bit so that they become tender. Now, I do not remove the seeds. Um, I don't care if there's seeds in these jars. It doesn't matter. I don't de-vein them. All I do is slice them. You may want to use gloves. You know, your hands may not be able to handle very much jalapenos. Mine are a little more used to it because I handle them quite often. And I think I've built up a tolerance to them. But I'm going to put this into a fairly big pot. You know, two quarts doesn't seem like that much, but it is in a pot. It's quite a bit. I want to add one and a half quarts of vinegar, like one jar and a half of the jar of vinegar into the pot with the jalapenos. I just use my quart jar to measure it with the same jars that I used to fill up. And so that's what I did. And I did not add water. I only put vinegar. But then I'm going to... Um, show you the jars and what I'm going to put in them because this is the secret ingredient of wonderful tasting nacho jalapenos. And like I said, you can also use this for pizza. Now I'm going to put one tablespoon of kosher salt. I put kosher salt. You can use canning salt. I've never used table salt when I can anything. I put one bay leaf in each jar and a nice pinch of dried oregano into each jar. 
And if I don't have enough, you know, I'm looking up. So I don't think that's enough oregano. I'll put a little bit more of a pinch into the jar. And that's it for now. I am going to add one last secret ingredient. But first, I need to get the jalapenos into the jars before I add that last secret ingredient. Now, they're ready. They came to a boil, and you can see they've changed color. And that's a sign that they've been cooked and they're tenderized. And now I'm going to add them to my canning jars. Now, the rings and the seals... I use seals that were already used. See, I'm not going to can these, so to me it doesn't matter if I use a seal that's already been used, but I will tell you they actually resealed. They did. They, the jars sealed themselves. But like I said, I don't water bath can these. They, they, I have had this sometimes jalapenos like this a year and a half, and uh, so... I don't water bath can them. I already explained to you how you could check to see if you thought they were going bad. Just look at the bottom. If they look a little milky, then they're going bad on you. But I've never had that happen. Now, here's the last secret ingredient that makes these wonderful tasting. Oil. Now, I use olive oil, but you can use vegetable oil. Now, I don't have vegetable oil. I buy olive oil. And you want to put a good coating so the whole top of it is covered good. Olive oil is, or oil is another deterrent to bacteria. It helps. And I put enough to just cover it. And that's, that's all that I do to it. And then I put the rings and the seals on top. Of course, I wash them, but I didn't put them in no hot water and heat them up. Or nothing, and I am not going to water bath can these, but like I said, they did seal on their own. And you can put these in your refrigerator or set them on a shelf, it doesn't matter, they keep. Well, God bless, and hope you enjoy this and put food away.